In this video, this is part two of our two by four video series. Uh, in this part, we're going to be talking about how to live by the power of God. So remember, two by four stands for we play, live and we play according to the word of God, by the power of God, for the glory of God. And so this, this second part is how to live by the power of God. And so to do this, uh, I've used an acronym uh, that I got from John Piper. Um, if you look at, uh, you can find this on the uh, website desiringgod.org. Um, and uh, the acronym is APTAT, and this stands for How Do We Go About Living by the Power of God? All right, so here's what the APTAT stands for, and we're going to kind of walk through this uh, to, today. Um, to live by the power of God, first of all, you've got to admit that you can do nothing by yourself. And this is vastly different than self-help that we've talked about. Uh, self-help um, is to just use your own power to um, advance your life. And, and uh, living by the power of God, first of all, we admit we can't do anything by ourselves. Uh, the next, the P stands for to pray for help. T is to trust a specific promise of God. A is for act on that promise. And then the last T is for thank God for his help. So we're going to go through in this video and just kind of break this down a little bit. So first of all, we admit that we can't do anything of ourselves uh, by ourselves. And nextly, we ask for help. Um, we ask, Lord, help. I, I can't do this myself. Lord, help. Uh, and then the T, this is really where the meat of this is. The T is the, trusting a specific promise of God. Um, and it, it's it's very clear in Scripture that that by trusting God's promises, uh, that that is... How, how we get to um, how we get to grow in him so first of all let's let's talk a little bit about second uh, Peter verse 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 4 says and because of his glory and excellence he has given us great and precious promises these are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires so you can see in this passage that how important it is to trust in God's promises because these promises can help you share in his divine nature, which is exactly what we're talking about, is living God's uh, living by God's power. Uh, these promises enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desire. So right now, you can see God's promises are a key not only to um, living according to his word, but also by his power. Um, and then another practical example of what this looks like is, is uh, Abraham. It says in Romans chapter 4, verses 20 and 21, Abraham never believed, never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this, he brought glory to God. So he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And that's exactly what we're talking about here is trusting a specific promise of God. So when you come up against something that you're not sure you can handle, um, you admit that you can't do it on your own. You ask for help, and then and then you trust a specific promise of God. Now, the, the Bible is full of of promises that that you can uh, lean on and go to and just as a side note here i wanted to list this book right here by jermaine copeland prayers that avail much um that series uh i i read the one for for men because obviously i'm a man so i um <clears throat> i read this one but these prayers uh in this in these book now they have these prayers that avail much for students they have them for women they have them for um, just for anybody, just in general, prayers that avail much. It's just a whole series of these books. And um, the thing I like about this book so much is that the prayers in this book are soaked with the promises of God. Um, and, and it's recalling these promises of God. And it's listed situationally. Um, for instance, when you need to be more productive at work or when you need wisdom in making a decision. It's it's um, laid out situationally and has promises that you are praying in each and every one of those situations. So I highly recommend this book if if you're looking to uh, figure out what some of those promises of God are. And that's why it's so important to get in his word so that you know those promises uh, when you come up against things that are tough um, or, or just any time in life. Living by his promises are what enables us to live by his power. And so it's important that we know what those are. And I think this book is a, is a great resource to help us learn some of those promises situationally. So once we admit that we can do nothing by ourselves, we pray for help, we trust the specific promise of God. The next thing to do is to act on that promise. Um, so for instance, let's say you're nervous about um, you're nervous about a day at work or you're nervous about something you have to do. Um, you know, one of the promises that God has in Isaiah 41 says, um, don't be dis uh, don't be afraid for I'm with you. Don't be dismayed for I'm your God, for I will strengthen you. 
help you and I will hold you up with your, my victorious right hand. That's a promise right there. And so when you believe in that promise, you trust in that. Now you go on and you act on it. You go do what you got to do. Um, so what I found it to be true in my experience is not that I wait until those feelings of fear are gone. Um, I, I don't, you don't wait until they're gone, until you feel strengthened, until you feel like you're, you're uh, at peace. Um, no, you act on that promise that God has promised that he will give you those things. And he usually gives them along the way as you're, as you're acting, not, uh, not before uh, you do. That's usually, that's just what I found to be true in my experience is that once you trust that specific promise of God, now go act on that promise as if that promise is true. Even if you don't feel like it at the time, the feelings come later is, is what I found to be true in my experience. And then the last T is that once you've admitted that you can do nothing yourself, you've prayed for help, you've trusted a specific promise of God, you've acted on that promise, and you've seen God act, now thank him for his help. Uh, and that, that is how we live by the power of God. Um, and so, yeah, I would encourage you just to, to find those promises of God and, and, and to cling to those, to trust in those like Abraham did, that what he's promised, he is able to perform. And, and that is how we live by the power of God. And so uh, before we move on, then the next video that we're going to do, part three, we'll talk about the last part of uh, for the glory of God. So we've talked about how to live according to the word of God, by the power of God. And then the next video, we're going to talk about how to live for the glory of God.